Hey, this is Chris Bogart, and I'm going to be doing a segment. Um, this is going to be called Tech Cards, and I'm not really sure. Tech, yeah, Tech Cards and Underestimated Cards. So I have ten cards here for you guys. Well, like one, two, three. I have two of those. You need two of those in the deck. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are three of those. All right, so I'm just going to go down the list. First card is uh, Morphing Draw Number Two. I like this card. Uh, most of these cards are side deck cards, by the way. If you have, if like, yeah. So Morphing Draw Number Two is pretty nice. Uh, if you don't know what it does, look it up. It's amazing against low monster count decks such as Six Samurai. Gravekeepers, Gladiator Beast, etc. But this is a uh, amazing card. Not much to say about it, but so much to say about it at the same time. Next, Clock Tower Prison is something I side deck. Per like I personally side deck this card because I like not the Dreadmaster effect. Fuck the Dreadmaster effect. I like the effect after four of your opponents stand by faces. When this gets four counters, no battle damage is dealt to you. So. I like that effect, I mean, like, why not plus off it, or not, it's not really a plus, it's more like a, keep it as a field, and just, you know, not lose life from it. Next, um, I main deck these, Magic Cylinder, I got my s secret ones, this is so sexy, but I like main decking Magic Cylinders, because they are just amazing, they could turn over the game so easily, because your opponent tries to push, push for game, and you literally can win with this. Uh, so I, I have won with it multiple times, but next card on the list is Mechlord Granel. I like playing this at one because one, I don't play any Solemn, so my life is usually pretty high, and two, because it's, um, I mean, like, if your monsters are destroyed by Dark Hole, your own Dark Hole even, or Solemn Warning, Solemn Judgment, you are able to plop this out on the field, and usually, it's a pretty big beater. I'm just gonna go righty now. Next card... Penguin Soldier. I have a rare one because I personally like the rare one of a super. It's harder to find. And why my hand got caught on that, I'm not sure. But Penguin Soldier fucks decks up. I mean, this stops OTKs and a lot of things. And this card is just amazing. I mean, old style, but it's pretty cool. Now, Horn of the Heaven is another card I like. It's a counter trap card. Uh, this is rare. But. What I like about it is the fact that you tribute, I believe, tri yeah, tribute one monster to your side of the field. Well, that's very effective with a couple cards. Uh, Reborn Tengu, you will be able to plus off it. Sangin, you'll be able to plus off it. Gravekeeper Recruiter, for example, I use this in my Gladiator Beast deck. You're able to plus off it. You use this card on, if your deck's based on plusing. And it's a counter trap, so it forces you, it either forces your opponent's Solemn, Solemn Judgment, or Seven Tools of the Bandit, or Dark Bribe. So, I like that card. This is personally one of my favorite cards in this whole thing, but Bubble Crash. If you don't know what this does, um, I have three of it because it's amazing. But it says, this card can only be activated when any player has more than six cards on the field and or in their hand. The, the, respect, the respective player, the player players must then select and send cards from their respective graveyards until the amount remaining on the field in their hand is five. So your p opponent's out there plus in a shitload with... All these Tangus and Hyper Librarian stuff, especially Hyper Librarian. That is why I picked up these cards, by the way. Uh, picked them up from someone for like a buck a piece, which is actually sort of worth it, but this will screw up your opponent's gameplay. They will either lose hand advantage or lose fan ad ha field advantage because they had more cards. So you just flop this over when your opponent's done on the combos, and they lose it a lot. If they don't lose everything, they lose a lot. They lose more than you do. You only lose a bubble crash. Usually, your opponent is going to be losing a lot. So I used up, I picked up three of these. I mean, why not, right? Hyper Librarian's going to be bullshit all summer and at Nats. So I picked up one. Anyways, next card. If you're playing a slow, wow, that's more damage on the camera than it is in real life. Actually, this is pretty damaged. But Chain Energy. Um, it's a card I have to say is, wow, fail. It's good when you are playing slow decks. When you're playing a slow deck like, Crystal Beast compared to aggroing. If it's like, or not really Crystal Beast. I'll say, hmm. You're playing. I can't think of anything. Gravekeepers. You only play a couple cards. Necro Valley, Descendant, Royal Tribute. And if your opponent wants to protect themselves, they're gonna have to take some life points. 
Or if their opponent wants to summon a monster to try to top your descendant, they gotta pay some life points. So I like playing that. Uh, pretty good tech of mine. Next card, Sasuke Samurai number two. This is literally, it's a trap stun. Once returned during your main phase, you can pay 800 life points. If you do, into the end phase, spell trap cards cannot be activated. So this is a trap, it's a cold wave, essentially. So when I play this on the field, um, basically my I force my opponent into playing their Solemn, because Bottomless is more on his 200 attack. But it's a good way to start off an OTK if you didn't know, if you know Summon already. It's just, it's pretty cool. Forces a Solemn. And if you do force a Solemn with this, you have open room, more open room to summon something bigger. And last card, Scrap Iron Scarecrow, because I honestly still like this card, because there's nothing really bad about it. Every turn, you're able to negate an attack, and if all else fails, you force your opponent's MST onto it, if they're trying to push for game. So... I don't know what's bad about this. I mean, all ten cards here I like. I love that, love that. I love all these cards here, basically. But, um, tell me down below which was your favorite out of these ten cards. Well, technically speaking, um, thirteen cards, but that's not the point. Comment down below what your favorite of the card is. I honestly am going for, my favorite here is probably Bubble Crash because how much Hyper Librarian is going to play into, uh, decks now. But, yeah. It's up to you guys. Comment down below. Uh, thumbs up this video if you like it. Uh, if you want me to continue doing the segment. I do, every single time I go to my local, I look for cards that could be text. Like Bubble Crash was something I actually found at my local. It was pretty cool. Uh, totally worth it. But, um, yeah, thumbs up the video if you like the series. I'll be looking for more cool cards uh, and underestimated cards to go through. Um, I did 10 today. I think I should have only done one at a time. But, um, it doesn't really matter for, for you subscribers. All 200 of whatever amount I'm at. But, I'm at about 200. Anyways, I uh, hope you like this segment. And subscribe to my channel, please. Recommend me to other channels. Put me in your sub box, whatever. And, yeah, hope these tips have helped you, um, think about new side deck options. I mean, like, Bubble Crash is gonna... I, I know nobody in the world would have thought this would be a side deck card for Nats this year. I mean, except me, because I'm freaking chinky as hell, and I'm Asian, and I know wisdom and such. The lighting in this room sucks, by the way. I only have, like, two lights there, and it sucks. It's all dark. My videos are going to be dark, guys. I'm sorry. But anyways, um, go ahead and subscribe. Peace out, YouTube.